well consider that that guy's doing way too much. <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way, but I'm delighted for all the opportunities to serve that have come my way. I consider myself a very lucky fellow to have the honor, the privilege, the opportunity for growth in singing for a community of people for 50 years. And I'm happy to be here. You all have such a welcoming spirit. It's, it's always uh, my, one of my refueling stations. And you might say, well, won't you come here more often? <laughs> uh, because I'm always going somewhere more often, I guess. I want to start off, um, well, the whole thing for me is shaped around three songs. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure how many, I may have sung all these songs here before, but they seem really appropriate, and if I have sung them, it's been a while. Um, I want to open up with a, a poem by Wendell Berry called, well, he calls it Song, but I got his permission to, to rename it The Circles of Our Lives. And in the, in the middle of the night, when I was recovering from a surgical procedure, my sleep patterns were all crazy. I read this poem, and suddenly, I think in a moment of divine inspiration, I thought, oh, I know exactly how to express that musically. And the second thing, it was already 2.30 in the morning, and I thought, well, you're going to have to write this down or record it because you'll never remember it in the morning. So I did. Uh, I wasn't really ready to work yet. But I wanted to just preface this by saying a couple of, one, one, one framing remark. The central metaphor of this poem is country dance. And Wendell, of course, lives in, and farms in Henry County. I'm very familiar with the old traditional con country dance. And, you know, these days we tend to just dance, sometimes just by ourselves, our A partner. But in country dance, if you're there all evening, you will eventually have danced with everyone present. And it's a tremendous affirmation of community. And Wendell loves that. So as you hear these words that I'm singing, I wrote the melodies for it, but just maybe close your eyes and envision a large floor with people dancing together in community. And how much, what, what Wendell's words, if you look at it in that light, the words come together and you get a sense of what Wendell is talking about. We're moving within circles, within circles. Reminding us that life is a celestial dance that engages not only the individual, but the whole universe. This, for me, is the meaning of Easter and Palm Sunday. It reminds me that we must be growing and emerging into new life continually. Within the circles of our lives we dance the circles of the years, the circles of the seasons, within the circles of the years, the cycles of the moon, within the circles of the seasons, or oh, the circles of our reason, within the cycles of the moon. And again we come and go, change changing, hands join, unjoin in love and fear, grief and joy, the circles turn, each giving into each, into all. Only music keeps us here, each by all the others held. In the hold of hands and eyes We turn in pairs That joining, joining Each to all again Then we turn aside A 
alone Out of the sunlight gone Into the darker circles of return of the seasons within the circles of the years the cycles of the moon within the circles of the seasons or oh, the circles of our reasons within the cycles of the moon or oh, the circles of our reasons within the cycles of the moon It's a wonderful poem. It says so much to me because Wendell talks a lot about circles versus straight lines. And we've developed a world, an economy, a whole system that moves in a linear fashion from point A to point B. And we leave a lot of debris in our trail. You know, when we're moving that way. And there's, it's in opposition to the understanding of creation that the native people who lived here before us held to steadfastly. And that is that life is a cycle, an ongoing eternal cycle of emergence, of flourishing, nurturing, developing, and dying. And that this repeats endlessly. And if we understand ourselves in the middle of that, of that circle, that cycle, we'll find enormous comfort, enormous sense of purpose, and a path, a path that is sustainable, that can keep us alive physically, spiritually, and as a community. I wrote a song called The Birth of Me, and you shouldn't say these things. They've always told me, but I don't consider it the best song I've ever written. But I do. it does say some things that are embedded in my soul. So I offer it to you, humbled to have the opportunity to sing for you. change are blowing filled with endless possibility there's a peace beyond our knowing there's a lifetime blinding epiphany there's the landscape of a sacred dream uncharted seas of mystery the soulful song with a brand new theme and it feels to me a lot like victory I feel the winds of eternity blowing through the finitude of my days I feel the seeds of new life growing in the soil of a thousand graves and this is the birth of me unfolding dream coming to be changing my reality and this is what it means to be free my mind shapes my destiny my thoughts become my history 
On my way to a new horizon, the life I dream comes rising. Letting go of limitation, give no time to hesitation, take life's open invitation to the banquet of creation. my destiny my thoughts become my history on my way to a new horizon the life I dream comes rising and this is the birth of me unfolding dream coming to be changing my reality this is what it means to be free this is what it means to be free I think I have about 11 minutes, so here we go. The whole thing is about endless possibility. For me, that's the deepest meaning of resurrection. Much, in the t much of the time, we're trapped in a linear world. Get up and go to work, pay the bills, do everything in this linear fashion. And we fail to remember that the gift of life moves in circles. So on this Palm Sunday, I feel the gift and the power of a triumphal entry, which is for me a grand emergence that leads to personal transformation and resurrection, new life. We're on the threshold of a dream, a divine dream, and divine spirit is calling us to the drama and the dance of continual rebirth and renewal. That is what we're here for. That is who we are. Thinking about the story today, Jesus' triumphal entry, as we refer to it, into Jerusalem. In the days and weeks before entry into Jerusalem, the first Palm Sunday, I guess, we, whatever day of the week it was. Jesus was speaking as a prophet. He was challenging the dominant paradigm of religious authority. He was a rebel. He was living in a time when people were under the dominion of the Roman Empire. And a lot of people, including some of his disciples, wanted Jesus to assume the role of a revolutionary who would lead some kind of uprising and throw off the forces of oppression, a political gambit. But Jesus was not interested in that at all. He was more interested in something connected to that which is eternal. He was calling for a transformation that would lead us to a deeper alignment of our lives with, div with the divine principles of love, mercy, meekness, justice, true righteousness, forgiveness, all those things that he outlined clearly in his Sermon on the Mount. He preached about loving our enemies. You think how incredible that is? And I have said to people, we have to love our enemies. And I have people say to me, you must be crazy. And I say to them, yes. 
It's a divine craziness. According to the Gospels, Jesus preached and performed miracles throughout the region, and he was developing a following. His popularity was rising. I always say somewhat sardonically, Jesus' ratings were really high on that entry. But how quickly in one week they fell. It went from Hosanna to crucify him. A fascinating story telling us how fickle the adoration and acclaim of people can be. As we would say today, Jesus' ratings were high. People were taking notice of a certain genteel authority in his teachings. He was touching hearts. And this made the religious leaders of his community, this made them keep a very, very careful eye on this spiritual rebel, a suspicious eye, as it were. But the only kingdom that Jesus represented was the kingdom of heaven, which is in stark contrast to an earthly kingdom based on military power and control, ruled by principalities and powers, as the Bible says. Jesus was teaching us that ultimately this so-called world order must serve a much higher order. I believe he saw himself as taking up the mantle of the prophets, the prophets that came before him, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, and Michael. Listen to the words of Amos when he says, Hear the word of the Lord. And this is what God, as Amos said, this is what God is saying to his people. I despise your religious festivals. What? You're not pleased? Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness roll on like a never-failing stream. Those are the words of Amos. Sounds remarkably familiar to me to what Jesus was saying hundreds of years later. And then there's Micah, who was a contemporary of Hosea and Isaiah. And my favorite lifelong guide, the scripture verse that I have lived by my entire life, is Micah 6, 8, which you know well. He has showed the old man what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with God? Jesus, to me, was clearly in this lineage of prophets. This is his role as a servant. He wasn't seeking political power. He was seeking transformation individually and as a people and as a nation. This is why he rode into Jerusalem not on a grand stallion, a horse, as a military conqueror or a king might do, representing military might and dominance. For his triumphal entry, he chose to ride a donkey. And that represents his quintessential humility as a servant of the living God. He came not as a dominating king, but as the prince of peace. He spoke out against the legalistic perspectives and practices that he saw dominant in his culture. He insisted that God wants more from his children than strict adherence to rules, laws, or ritual. God wants a change of heart and mind and the commitment to live by the kingdom of heaven values of love, mercy, meekness, gentleness, kindness. And when you list those things and you compare them to what we see on CNN every day, you know that we as a people of faith are very different from that. That is not what Jesus was seeking in his triumphal entry. It was not the triumphal entry of a king, of a ruler, 
It was that triumphant entry of a servant living by the rules, the principles of divine love. The dream, and this is a dream, isn't it? It's not manifest except in us. The dream of a better world becomes reality when we invest in it by surrendering our ego and letting these divine principles guide us in everything we do. Today, we're called to look again at Jesus' triumphal entry, riding on a donkey. It did not resemble at all the triumphal entry of a conquering king. It was the triumph of divine love over hate and wrong. It was not the coronation of a king. It was Jesus announcing that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. A new world order, a new way of living that seeks alignment with divine principles. This kingdom offers us the gift of new life, of peace, of harmony with creation. The opportunity we have not only on Palm Sunday, but on every day, each day of our lives, is to open ourselves to endless possibility. And Jesus' triumphal entry and what captures my attention and holds my heart in rapt attention today is that this triumphal entry needs to happen in each of our hearts. Realizing the dream means understanding that, first of all, it's a divine and universal dream. It's a gift from God that brings truth to guide us, love to nurture and heal us, and divine comfort when we're troubled and struggling. This triumphal entry into Jerusalem says in a powerful way that we are aligned with God. And this is not a God that I need to fight for. It's a God that I need to love for. This is an invitation to step into the light or to step into the night with a bright light to dispel darkness. We carry that light. To step into the world of hate with the gift of love. To stand up as a humble child of God, seeking truth and speaking truth. We are seeking transformation based on our alignment with divine hope and divine love. And when that bright morning rolls around, we will find ourselves in fullness and completeness. I want to close this out with a song written by a wonderful writer, Iris Dement, who wrote the theme song for Northern Exposure that was used to be on years ago, one of my favorite shows that I even had time to watch a couple of episodes of. And this song is simply called When My Morning Comes Around, and I invite us all to listen to these words in the light of Palm Sunday and also this coming Easter Sunday. When they went to the tomb on Easter Sunday and found it, the stone rolled away. It was a new day. When my morning comes around No one else will be there I won't have to worry About what I'm supposed to say And I alone will know I've climbed that great big mountain And that's all that will matter When my morning comes around When my morning comes around I will look back on this valley 
on these sidewalks and alleys where I have lingered so long this place where I now live will burn to ash and cinder like some ghost I won't remember when my morning comes around when my morning comes around from a new cup I'll be drinking for once I won't be thinking there's something wrong with me and I'll wake up and find my faults have been forgiven and that's when I'll start living when my morning comes around when my morning comes around Thank you. I think it's time for the offertory. Kristen, are you? Very good. And I have another song I'll sing for that. Come on up to the house. You know it. Sing it with me. For we know that as we give to what spiritually feeds us, it creates a ripple that goes out into the universe, blessing the world around and forming a vacuum that draws more goodness and abundance into our life. As we give out of the goodness of our heart and soul, so shall we receive. Please take your love offering in your hand as we pray our blessing. When the moon is broken, the sky is cracked Come on up to the house The only thing that you can see Is all that you lack Come on up to the house Come on up to the house Come on up to the house The world is not my home I'm just passing through Come on up to the house Great guy. When there's nothing in the world that you can do, come on up to the house. And you're whipped by the forces that are inside you. Come on up to the house. When you're high on top of your mountain of woe, come on up to the house. You know you should surrender, but you can't let go. Come on up to the house. Sing it. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. The world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Through. Come on. One last time. 